Hi, General Ryder. Thank you for doing this. Um, have you or the staff had a chance to speak to the Secretary, and has he shared at all uh, why he was reluctant to make his condition public until now? And then given the seriousness of his treatment, do you suspect that he might have to take a step back from some of the more rigorous parts of his job, such as a lot of the overseas travel he's been doing, and maybe delegate that to Secretary Hicks? Um, the, the staff has been in contact with the secretary. Um, I have not personally spoken to the secretary, but I, I do know, for example, that uh, he's in regular communication with his chief of staff. Uh, as for his travel schedule, um, of course, I, I don't have anything to announce. I can tell you that he is actively engaged in his duties, uh, as I highlighted, uh, and um, fully engaged. Uh, and so, you know, completely confident in that. And we'll obviously keep you updated in terms of his status in the hospital. Has he expressed at all why he was reluctant to share what he was going through until now? Uh, I, I don't have that specifically from the Secretary Tara, but obviously, as I highlighted, um, you know, it's uh, uh, prostate cancer and the associated procedures are uh, obviously deeply personal. Uh, and so, uh, again, you know, we'll continue to work hard to make sure that we're being as transparent as possible uh, moving forward. Uh, and again, wish the Secretary a speedy recovery. And then just last, you know, there's still a lot of questions on the process about all of the notification that didn't happen. When he was taken by ambulance to Walter Reed and had personal security detail with him, why at that point wasn't there like a call to an operations center or something that would have triggered a greater awareness that uh, he was getting medical care? Yeah, so again, a, a fair question, and at, at the, you know, for the sake of not doing the review here from the podium, uh, as I highlighted, the Director of Administration and Management has been directed to lead a thorough review to look at exactly those kinds of questions, the relevant facts and circumstances during the period in question to evaluate the processes and procedures uh, by which the Deputy Secretary of Defense was notified uh, and the associated timeline. So again, we'll uh, commit to being as transparent as we can in terms of the results of that review. Let me go to Liz here. Thanks, Pat. The Chief of Staff and the Senior Military Advisor were both told on Tuesday that Secretary Austin was in the hospital. Um, could the Chief of Staff have asked the SMA to make the proper notifications for her since she was sick with the flu? Yeah, again, we fully recognize that there are going to be many <laughs> questions in terms of notification timelines as well as the uh, transparency issues that we've highlighted. So I, I really think that this review is going to help us get to ground truth in a holistic way um, so that, that we can learn from it importantly, but also ensure that we're, we're doing better next time. So I think we really need to allow this review to run its course in order to do that. In the meantime, we've taken some immediate steps as I, I highlighted at the top. I mean, would that have been under procedure for the SMA to notify the White House National Security Advisor? A again, certainly. Uh, you know, we, we want to make sure that notifications are happening in a timely way, and in this way, as we've acknowledged, there were some shortfalls, and so it's important that we go back and look at what those shortfalls were, what could have been done better, and make sure that going forward, uh, we're improving those processes. So again, this review will, will help us. Let me go to Courtney. Do you still think it's appropriate to, to call his medical procedure on December 22nd, the prostateectomy, um, elective medical procedure if it was treating prostate cancer? So I'm going to I'm I'm going to defer to medical officials on this again. This is uh, the you know we released this information uh, as soon as we had it, and so uh, again I'm going to refer back to the statement and you know going forward we'll use that as the baseline in terms of describing. Um, but you know in this particular case, as soon as we had the information made available to us, we provided it to you. Do um, it seem because it seems frankly like you were deceived by telling everyone that it was an elective medical procedure and by telling that to the public. I mean, it doesn't seem elective if he had prostate cancer and this was treating it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a medical professional. Again, we're going to try to provide you with the most information we have as quickly as we have it, um, you know, and recognizing that, as I say that, we could have done a better job last week. So, um, you know, again, we have this information now from these medical professionals. Uh, and I, I think that, you know, it will go a long way in terms of helping to understand the situation and what needs to be done going and, forward. And when was President Biden notified that the secretary was diagnosed with prostate cancer? Uh, I'd have to refer you to the White House. I just don't know. Natasha. Um, thank you, General Ryder. So the memo that was drafted by Austin's chief of staff that lays out the 30-day the review that's going to be done, 
It doesn't mention the initial December 22nd hospital stay. So has the Pentagon determined that in that instance, all appropriate notification procedures were followed despite the Deputy Secretary of the White House not being notified that he was undergoing surgery, which we now know that he was under general anesthesia for? Yeah, I think I think that uh, the, the information that we gather and the lessons that we learn from the period uh, from last week will be applicable across the board, right? So uh, would would similarly apply to the situation on December 22nd. The bottom line is ensuring that if there is a transfer of authority, making sure that the appropriate senior leaders in the chain of command know, uh, and that importantly, there's a, a rationale to be able to provide some perspective in terms of why these transfers of authority are occurring. So certainly lessons learned from that will be applied to transfer, transfers of authority in the future. And just to be clear, prior to him going under general anesthesia, he transferred his authorities to uh, the deputy secretary? That is correct. Okay. Come over here, Laura, and then I'll go to Andrews. Yeah. Um, just again, on, when this happened in December, whose decision was it not to alert the president that the defense secretary had prostate cancer? Um, again, you know, as far as uh, the situation, um, in terms of, of what the elective surgery was and the secretary's condition, um, we're providing that information to you as we've received it. Uh, and we received that this afternoon and, and we're providing it to you now. Um, so I'll just leave it there. Well, you, clearly you didn't know. Did chief of staff, did the chief of staff know? I'm not gonna go into the specifics on who specifically knew what, when, and where. Again, our review will help us better understand that other than to say, you know, as, as soon as we had this information to make available, um, we provided it. We got it this afternoon and provided it literally minutes before I stepped in here. And just la one last one. Did he lose consciousness at all during the December 22nd surgery? To my knowledge, no. Interesting. Just a couple of questions. Um, has the secretary been on any medication that might alter his judgment in e either of those hospital visits? Um, so, Idris, uh, I have no indications, again, I have no indications anything that would affect his decision-making uh, abilities. He's obviously, you know, as I highlighted in the, in the statement, at no time has he been unconscious or under general anesthesia and, of course, uh, is in the presence of medical professionals for the duration. Um, when he uh, resumed full duties on Friday evening that was in consultation with medical professionals uh, and as we've highlighted in the press releases that we've put out uh, he continues to stay very actively engaged with his senior staff uh, and is is making important decisions about national security and defense. Has he asked his chief of staff to resign or has she offered to resign? No. And then lastly, sorry, very quickly, uh, the White House Chief of Staff put out a statement to different cabinet secretaries about procedures. Does the secretary believe that he has become a distraction for the administration in which he serves during an election year? Yeah, this, the secretary continues to remain focused on recovering, but more importantly, on carrying out his duties as Secretary of Defense and defending the nation. Let me go to Tom and then we'll go to Carl. Thank you. Uh, different topic.